So our next uh, speaker here is Andrew Chung. He's the lead of innovation projects at uh, lead, uh, Skills for Change. What a great title, eh? Lead for Innovation Projects. Daunting as well, sounds very daunting. Uh, Andrew Chung has been with Skills for Change for about four years, focusing his energies on impacting social change through innovation and collaboration. Some of the projects currently in incubation under his leadership are the Gender-Based Analysis and the Ideation Uncommittee. Andrew graduated from Ryerson University with a Bachelor of Arts in Public Administration and minored in nonprofit and voluntary sector management. He's worked in the nonprofit sector for over seven years, seven, with some fantastic organizations and also dabbled in his own consultancy as a strategic planning facilitator as a law student of the University of Ottawa and in grassroots campaign management. In 2003, Andrew received the Lincoln M. Alexander Award for his work towards the elimination of racial discrimination in Ontario, and in 2006, received the BMO Financial Group Diversity Award for his leadership in diversity and inclusion activities. In 2009, Andrew continued his volunteer efforts with the Asian Community Aid Services, an organization that provides HIV AIDS prevention and awareness, queer youth programming and services, and support to people living with HIV AIDS. In 2010, he was elected as vice chair of the board of the Asian Community Aid Services and served as co-chair of the Strategic Planning and Fundraising Subcommittees. I present to you Andrew Chung. I'm going to uh, just take you through, first of all, thank you to Okazi, Doug, and Lorraine for um, hosting this awesome session. Um, really appreciate it. Um, and I also look forward to meeting uh, tons of faces that I've never seen before in the sector. Um, and so that, that's part of the reason why I wanted to come today. But um, I, I wanted to uh, sort of, I guess uh, it's great that Fade went first because uh, the information that he provided was so foundational. Uh, and I think that, uh, well, right now, Skills for Change also um, adopts um, a Find Help Information Services uh, approach and standard to um, INR um, as, our, uh, as our standard of practice. And so it, it's, uh, it's great that um, he provided that, us, uh, that for us. Um, let me just take you really quickly through this. So uh, Skills for Change opened in uh, 1982 uh, with seven typewriters uh, donated from IBM and uh, seven women from Southeast Asia uh, took training with those seven typewriters and uh, several months, months later out the door they went with jobs, um, uh, jobs in their hands. Uh, today we have five locations, actually we have six locations, but five service locations uh, throughout the Greater Toronto Area. We help about 10 to 14,000 on average uh, individuals uh, each year. Um, and last year, 2011-2012, uh, we had uh, 29,160 uh, service units. Um, and we provide settlement language and sector-specific training in, in, in a variety of areas. So our mission is uh, really, you know, uh, it's uh, immigrants and refugees. We, uh, we want uh, newcomers to come to Canada knowing that their employability can be uh, adapted and used for uh, the, the Canadian labor market. And uh, our direction right now is staying relevant and practical by using technology to move into a plugged in presence where anyone in the city, across the country, anywhere in the world, um, can build their networks and connect with successful employment. So information and referral to us uh, uh, is, is everything. So it's not uh, a program, it's not in just settlement services. Um, it is everything that we do. Uh, our programs and services are supported by INR. Uh, settlement services, language classes, career training, employment support and mentoring, um, it doesn't matter uh, where you're going in Skills for Change, uh, you're bound to need information um, or referral somewhere and whether that's internal or external. Um, and so uh, as part of those programmings, uh, we do have uh, partnerships and, um, and some of them here that we've highlighted are housing access and support services, um, settlement services. Uh, we go out uh, sort of like a joint itinerant service with uh, CCLCS. And uh, we have uh, licensing and regulatory bodies, such as the ones that are listed here, who do breakfast learning sessions. And this is open to clients, this is open to non-clients, and this is open to our staff. And um, some of these, like CGAO, CMA, are, are, are sponsors, and they are really involved in some of our events. 
Uh, but beyond that, we wanted to make a stronger connection and deeper connection with our sponsors and say, well, you know, how can, how can we partner and really leverage the information that you have? Because the information that you have uh, may very well be the key to understanding how um, our clients can develop greater access to the professions. And so the breakfast sessions are learning opportunities to um, ask really important questions that aren't, that aren't in, um, I'll talk about design um, and how design really impacts um, social services um, and, and INR. But, you know, we thought like, you know, rather than having, um, you know, another session, another workshop where um, it's, uh, where it's the client that's sitting and listening and it's somebody, you know, yabbering for, you know, 45 minutes for an hour, it's, we sit down, it's very collaborative. Um, when you come in, it's, uh, it's, a, it's the expert from uh, the regulatory body and it's, it's clients who are interested in asking a bunch of questions. So the floor is very equal, it's very equitable, um, and so the access to information uh, seems a lot more fair. INR streamlining uh, has been really important in the last two years for Skills for Change. Um, what we've been finding is that even within the multiple programs and services at Skills for Change, um, one client would come in and you know, it's not the first, first call you know, resolution, it's okay, no, what you actually need is mentoring and then that person will go to mentoring and then you know, the mentoring worker would say, oh actually before you do mentoring you have to get assessed for something and so they go get assessed for something and then that person says, oh well you know, actually before you receive assessment you have to register as a skills for, skills for change client, right? And you know, this, you know, that's like the worst case scenario that <laughs> prior to 2010, but I think it's very common um, among, among social service agencies that you know, and the most frustrating thing, one of the most frustrating things for, uh, for a newcomer is like, it's already been you know, a hellish experience you know, getting myself from the airport to getting myself into a new home and into a new community. And then now I'm coming to a service organization that's supposed to help me, but I'm the one that's running around everywhere, right? And, and so we really wanted to funnel all that information and, and referral and have our staff empowered so that we also can make, um, have access to that information so that when we're sitting with a client, we can give them everything, you know, as much as, they, as much as we can, everything that they're looking for. And so the model now is rather than the client going out um, to reach all the services, it's the client that will be sitting with us and we're really giving them the best customer, ser like uh, client service support through this method. So part of that is um, we were looking at uh, how social technology mobile technology can really enhance our information referral services. And, and the one thing that I want to talk about first is, uh, is our interactive lobby. So what we're doing right now is we're integrating uh, interactive lobbies throughout um, all five locations. And uh, what an interactive lobby is, is it's the you know, antithesis to a uh, doctor's office reception room. Okay, so um, a client, before we had our interactive lobbies, a client would come in, they would sit in, in, in the reception area. It seems very clinical. So, um, you know, then, uh, so the, the experience, uh, and so this is almost like a human factors experience. Um, a client walks in, they go to reception, they give them their name, tell them uh, what they're there for, and then they'll sit down in the reception area and wait for um, their appointment. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But what we were thinking was, well, how can we make that a service? At, from, the, from point of entry into our doors, how can we make that an experiential service? And so our interactive lobbies are now, um, it's, we've set up I-bars. And so um, I-bars are, uh, we have like five or six uh, um, computers that are, it's, it's like walking into the Apple store. So you're going to the Apple store, you know, while you're waiting for um, help at the Genius Bar, you know, you're not just sitting around and waiting, you can actually use uh, the internet, you can go on and um, look, for, you can register uh, as a client for Skills for Change. And I'll talk about the back end process of that, because it's really exciting. Um, and so you're not just waiting around, you're already interacting, right? You're already having uh, access to uh, information from our website, um, or, or you know, whatever it is that you need to do um, online. And so now you're not waiting anymore. The experience that you're having with Skills for Change is already connecting to open accessibility to what you need. Um, all of our interactive lobbies also have a registration pull-down option. So when you, um, 
uh, when you go onto the computer, there's a, a register option. And once you put in, it's as simple as putting your name and your email address and then uh, a, a checkbox to consent to uh, submit your information to Salesforce. And so Salesforce is our uh, customer, uh, customer service uh, management um, program that we're using to uh, streamline how we communicate and how we keep track of our clients. And so as soon as a client registers uh, on, on, uh, through the interactive lobby, that information gets fed into Salesforce. It generates a lead for information referral specialists, and it pops up as a notification um, on uh, the staff person's email, and now they're able to get back to that person. So it's, it's, very, you know, it's very seamless, um, it's not burdensome, and it's very easy and open for, uh, for clients to, to gain access to information. Um, social media, uh, we've been using Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and most, most recently Tumblr um, to uh, feed information to, to our clients. And we're, going, we're developing a, a new Twitter feed for, uh, that's specifically geared to clients and information that they're, uh, that they're interested in. And this would be on, on the front page of our website. Uh, we've, we have about 45,000 visits per month to the Skills for Change uh, website. So it's a big opportunity to uh, give um, like, you know, late, the latest information on housing, on employment, on uh, policy changes in, in a certain uh, profession, um, anything that, uh, that, uh, that we might find relevant for our clients. And um, so it's rather than digging for information, it, it's right there. Um, and a part of that Twitter feed is uh, supported by um, a social media, or a, a, sorry, an information aggregate called Get Elevate. And uh, Get Elevate is uh, an aggregate platform that allows us to um, just get the key information that we want online and to have that streamed into uh, one email and then by from push of a button, it's, uh, it's placed onto our Twitter page. So again, it's not us you know, going online at nine in the morning and you know, for one hour looking for information, the information comes to us and then just from a push of a button, we say, okay, this is what uh, we want to post on our Twitter feed. And then out it goes onto the front page, client goes onto the Skills for Change website and it's already there for them. Um, you know, a part of uh, the information um, and referral perspective that Skills for Change is adopting is that, you know, it's a, we're, we need to be a tent and not a palace. And uh, by that I mean, one of, I think one of the principles of, no, of, of excellent nonprofit management is to understand that if we're not going to where the clients are, we will quickly become irrelevant. And, and so we, we think like, a, like it's, it's a tent perspective. You know, we, we can pick up and go where, where the clients are and go where they need, go where they're looking for services uh, rather than asking clients coming to us. And so, you know, like uh, sometimes I would, I would uh, read these uh, stories of, um, you know, the client came, you know, 100 kilometers, you know, um, every day diligently to take a job search workshop. But to me, that's not a success story. Like, why are we getting people to travel 100 kilometers you know, like and these, it, it doesn't make sense. You know, so we're, we're so that that perspective on on service delivery needs to change for us, and that was really important for Skills for Change, uh, which is why we we've started moving into this. Um, so now we're communicating um, through Eventbrite registration. People don't have to come in to uh, Skills for Change to get a to get a to get a calendar of a program of services guide or calendar. It's online. You can register on uh, for courses online. Um, we're now complying with all um, AODA standards and regulations to make sure that um, accessibility is not just on par, but it's actually accessible for people um, who, who need it. Um, and so Eventbrite's been great because you can go into the back end and customize the information um, and the news that you're sending out to the clients who've, who've registered for a course. And uh, it, it, the, the messaging around uh, providing information and services no longer becomes clinical because it's the voice of the person who's about to deliver the services. So it can be extremely friendly, right? So it's engaging. Um, it's not, you know, thank you for registering, um, you know, for more information. It can be, hey, so glad that you registered. Um, can't wait to meet you and engage in learning with you. Um, so so the, the perspective also on engaging clients in information referral services also changes. 
Um, a Google Hangout um, is something that we're that we're kind of testing, that we're testing the waters with, as well as a chat. Um, rather than having clients come in from where um, you know childcare uh, could be a barrier um, for uh, some women who um, who are who have the responsibility of uh, staying at home. And so instead of trying to find a way for them to come to us, why not just connect online? Why not just chat, phone call, Skype, Google Hangout? Um, and these things also create, you know, it's also financially strategic because if we can't afford to pay out tons of tokens, um, you know, every month, every year, then why don't we do some cost saving strategies around um, how we communicate and what's actually necessary and what most benefits the client. Because if a client is able to uh, also communicate with their smartphone on Skype or Google Chat while they're on, uh, on the go, um, you know, whether it's uh, a job search or whether they're going to a different uh, language course, then why don't we do that, you know? Um, so we're really trying to uh, also integrate um, the efficiency and effectiveness of understanding that a client is also busy, that we are not the center of their universe, and that we're just a part of it to really help them succeed um, as, as they move forward to find employment. In the near future, um, we are looking at some uh, ways that we can further um, our impact of our information and referral services. And a part of that is um, our gender-based analysis. And our gender-based analysis is um, the, we're trying to identify the barriers, the systemic barriers that immigrant women um, come across um, when accessing services at Skills for Change. And uh, everything from HR program uh, policies down to um, the wording on a, a client data form. Uh, we are examining everything. We've already had six focus groups with um, uh, immigrant women who, uh, who gave us just a wealth of information on what barriers that they come across um, in accessing programs, programs and services as well as information and referrals. And we want to use that information. And so it's not, it's not you know, a, um, a, a pro-woman's um, analysis. It's gender equity. So we're looking at if there isn't enough space, equitable space for, for women, in immigrant women in our programs and services, how can we create that space? Rather than creating different space, how can we create um, within the existing space, um, engaging and empowering space for immigrant women? And that will change the way that we, um, we deliver our information and referral um, because it will now have a gender lens attached to it where we are actively thinking about what we say could be oppressive or not oppressive, or what, what, we, what we write down could be engaging or not engaging uh, from the perspective of an immigrant woman. Um, interactive lobbies will be probably completed by the end of the year. Um, Cloud-based technology, again, we've aggregated a lot of our information onto um, on box.com. And so, you know, rather than um, emailing updates, uh, our clients can have access to one folder where, um, where information will be updated automatically and they can continue to access it. Um, we're also dabbling in, we, we've, we're just about to do a smartphone survey and we want to know how many of our clients actually use smartphones um, and, uh, versus their desktop uh, computer at home. And this is important to us because uh, we want to tailor our information and referral, uh, referrals uh, based on what kind of technology that they're using. And so if they're using mobile apps more often, then we're going to start thinking about developing a mobile app that get, can give direct, uh, very useful information or referral to clients who are looking for it rather than having to go to a desktop. So we're, we're looking at that as well. Um, our online presence is growing, so we really want to start leveraging that. Um, you know, uh, our clout score, um, on, t on, on Twitter is, is 40 plus, so that means we're consistent and focused. People actually respond to us. Um, they're retweeting information, and this is important for us um, to, to, 
capture an audience um, uh, of, of immigrants and refugees who are accessing our services because we want to make sure that the same social media tools that they're using that we're connecting with them uh, in those areas. And if we can um, be an effective and authoritative, reliable, trustworthy voice to, um, to our clients who uh, seek information uh, through, these, uh, through these mediums, then um, all the better. Um, website, so 18,000 vi uh, visitors, 45,000 page views for, per month. This isn't just like a, ooh, great, wow, like we're popular. It's actually a, a key indicator to us that um, this is where people are going to access information. And um, so right now, we're, um, our ICT uh, unit, so it's Information Communications and Technology, um, it's about four or five staff who, um, you know, the unit was created in order to um, support programs and services, and uh, that's all we are. We're not a leader, we're not like a, a think tank or any of that nature. We are there to strictly support programs and services in, um, in the delivery of, uh, of what they do. And, and so, we are trying to integrate, you know, um, how we communicate and what technologies we use um, to best support our clients. Um, something else about the tent versus palace is um, the future of funding. I, I think is very uncertain, um, and you know, this is me maybe speaking more than the agency. Um, but I think in, in being nimble, in being extremely responsive to uh, in times of uncertainty. Um, not being in the office uh, may have its benefits. Um, going out to where the clients are, you know, whether that's um, you know renting out free space at the ING Direct Cafe at uh, Young and Shooter, or uh, getting community space um, at uh, at the Center for Social Innovation, or partnering with another agency that does have. Um, more stable resources. You know, these are things that we're starting to look at in terms of community collaboration, um, where we're not so worried about the future of funding our overhead, and where we can minimize that and really start adopting a forward thinking practices in information referral services so we can continue to drive client service forward. And again, all things lead to employment. So if we don't need to spend $1,000 on overhead, we can reduce that somewhere by getting rid of a phone line or three phone lines and investing that in uh, a mobile laptop or an iPad and uh, a phone for people to get out and go where, go where the clients are, then that's, that's what we're thinking of doing. Um, you know, it, it's, it's very counterintuitive to a, a nine to five um, cubicle structure of working, but you know, our executive director is really a firm believer in, 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 um, in moving beyond our conventional thinking, really start challenging that to see where we can increase our efficiencies and effectiveness. And so um, you know, I don't have an office. So, uh, you know, there's an address on my business card, but I don't have an office. Um, our our uh, employment counselors, our, our, our INR specialists are encouraged to, you know, work in spaces where they feel um, they can be most, con uh, most effective. So that if that means that they're going to take phone calls at home because they don't have to drive um, an hour from, from Burlington, then all the better. Do it from home. Um, you know, if it means that you're going to have meetings at a coffee shop and, you know, that like four bucks for coffee or whatever, then go do it there, you know? So now it's not about, we're talking about outcomes, um, we're really starting to invest in impact. You know, we're looking not just, um, are we meeting our targets, but we're looking at if we had not intervened, you know, how effective would we have been? And so part of that is, central to that, is how we're delivering our informational referral services. And a part of that is looking at how our workplace, our workspace, is, is designed to facilitate the most effective methods of informational referral services. I hope I didn't confuse anybody, because that's a lot of information to, to jam pack. Um, so that's, that's all I have for you uh, at this moment. But if you do have questions later on, I'll be sticking around. Thank you.